The Supreme Court has spoken, but it might not get the final word in the health care debate, with the issue now taking center stage in the presidential race. The White House says bring it on, saying at this point voters just want to move ahead. I don't think the American people want to have this debate again. I don't think they want to be pulled back. It, it took decades of debate to get to where we are. We now have a law. The law is constitutional. We should implement it. But GOP leaders see it very differently, and House Speaker John Boehner is promising to try to repeal the law in its entirety. This has to be ripped out by its roots. This is government taking over the entire health insurance industry. The American people do not want to get on this path. Gretchen Hamill is the executive director of Public Notice. Chris Kofinas, the former national communications director for John Edwards' presidential campaign. Let's get a fair and balanced debate going here. So, Gretchen, why are, uh, you know, the, the public opinion polls say only about 6% of Americans think that health care is the number one issue in this country. If, if people don't care about it that much, why is the White House... Uh, and, and I guess je Democrats in general, why are they vowing to try to keep the law in place? Well, they're vowing to keep the law in place because they feel like it's a plus for them. They feel like that this is something that them, uh, the country has wanted for a long time. They were able to deliver on it. It was the cornerstone of their two years in complete control. But the truth of the matter is the majority of Americans don't like it. And if you look at what the top issues are, it's economy, it's jobs, it's government spending. And with health care now being back on the front burner, it becomes all the same issues that were the front-burning issues back in the 2010 election, and we all know how that went, and it didn't look good for Democrats, and that they could be facing the same sort of election this November. Uh, Chris, do you think that this is going to be an issue that's going to cost Democrats seats and, and maybe even the White House in, in November? Uh, I, I don't think so. I mean, to be honest, I think it all depends on who messages is better and who is more aggressive in terms of making their argument. I mean, if you look at, for example, uh, the Republicans in, in the Mitt Romney campaign just today, their story in terms of what health care reform is or isn't has already gotten jumbled. I think for Democrats, in particular for the White House, when you look at the, in particular, the key areas of the health care reform, you know, getting rid of pre-existing uh, condition bans, you know, helping, you know, ch children stay on their uh, health care, uh, parents' health care until the age of 26, filling the donut hole, these are things that the American people like. So if we can get that message out and make that clear, I, you know, I think you can have this as a positive, but at the end of the day, let's be honest, it's about the economy. That is going to be the main focus of both of these campaigns. Well, Chris, those are, those are things that the American people like, but you could have passed those things individually without the whole massive, what, 2,700-page bill, right? Not necessarily, because I think what people would argue, and people have made the argument, is without the individual mandate, how do you pay for it? I mean, at the end of the day, that's the crux of the problem. And that was the crux of the problem for Mitt Romney. I mean, this is the reality of where we are in terms of where people want to talk about the politics of health care. The Romney campaign is in a real bind. They cannot criticize Democrats and the president when it comes to health care reform because they passed the same health care reform in Massachusetts. It is basically exactly the same. Well, but Gretchen, I guess it's different to pass something on a state level versus passing something on a national level, something that the Supreme Court has now said is a tax. Absolutely, and he brought up a good point, and this plan is unaffordable. We're $16 trillion in debt. We have no end in sight. We have a Congress that can't even find a way to do a budget or even find the will to start cutting away the waste and fraud. How do we expect to pay for this? How can we do this? And I think that's something that we all need to be asking ourselves. You know, the intentions were right to reform health care. We all believe that health care needs to be reformed and something needs to be done about it, especially the cost to us personally on an individual basis, but as a country as a whole, the taxpayers can't foot the bill for everything. What about the replacement, Chris? Uh, we heard, you know, Chris Wallace pushing uh, Mitch McConnell repeatedly to get for Republicans to give some kind of an answer as to what they would replace the health care um, law with. I is that necessary? I mean, if, if only 6% of Americans are concerned about health care and health insurance, are people really clamoring for, for what's going to replace it? Well, I think the problem, and this is, to me is politics 101, if you're going to criticize a policy, if you're going to make the argument that a policy should go away, you've got to have an alternative. And I think the crux of the problem for Republicans in terms of the health care debate has always been that their answers and their solutions haven't been really valid or, or credible. And I think you saw that with McConnell's statement. And, in, and I think it goes to a bigger point. And, John, just you know, real quick in terms of the comment about tax, 
I mean, Eric Fenstrom, who is Mitt Romney's advisor, said today that it's not a tax. He agreed with the Obama argument that it's a penalty. So this whole debate is going to get much bigger, if you will, and the American people come November are going to decide which side is right. But it does not help the Republicans, you know, given the Romney campaign's mixed arguments and mixed messages. So, Gretchen, do Republicans need to come up with an alternative <laughs> if they're going to try to shoot down the health care law? Yes, the Republicans need to have an alternative. There are popular parts of this bill. There are reforms that need to be made. And there's also re reforms that weren't taken up in this bill that need to be made, like Medicare. Their waste and fraud in Medicare alone is $50 billion a year. That needs to be addressed. But, you know, going back to what he said, whether you call it a penalty or a tax, the IRS collects it. And last time I checked, they collect taxes. All right. Gretchen Hamill, Chris Kofinas, we're going to leave the discussion there. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you. you. And every April, you wish they didn't, right?